We made it. Game day. Sabres and Rangers, our first game preview episode of the season for Locked On Sabres. Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is presented by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more right now. New customers can get five dollars and get can bet five dollars and get two hundred in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com/slash Locked On to get. Started. It's a game night. Sabres and Rangers tonight at KeyBank Center. The home opener, the season opener. A lot of other teams have gotten underway. The Rangers haven't. The Sabres haven't. Sabre fans have not yet. Here we go. We'll look at the lineups. Who's starting in goal? That one should be a little bit obvious. What to expect in the arena tonight, by the way? There's a cool thing happening outside. There's things happening inside that are different that I want to point out as well. And we got some news to get to in the top of today's show. But as you can see, if you're watching along on our YouTube channel where you can check us out, be sure to check out the YouTube channel, like, and subscribe there. We always appreciate that. Also comments and questions as well. I'm wearing the Jersey, the Jim Lorenz Jersey, the number eight. It's been sitting over on the wall, hanging on the wall over here in a studio sneaky, if I may call it that. And uh, the Jersey's going on today because it's being, it's being worn to the arena. I've not decided yet though, if I want to go hoodie, with the jersey because it can be chillier in the arena. I'm thinking I'm going just jersey. I'm going to take the sweatshirt off. You know, that, that's, the, that's the look, though, right? That's the hockey fan look, the, the hoodie underneath the jersey. It falls back. Hockey season is back when you got the jersey over the hoodie. So get to the game featuring the Sabres and Rangers. A lot of news and notes, though, as well that I want to get to in the top. One is Sabre-related. One is not directly Sabre-related. Number one. The New Jersey Devils announcing that Lindy Ruff is signing a multi-year extension with the club. Um, Really cool. Really happy for Lindy. I love Lindy. All Sabre fans love Lindy. When the RJ Memorial happened uh, at the arena over the summer, Lindy went up on stage and got a massive ovation. Um, Massive ovation. And I think Doc Granato was taken back by that. Like, Look, look at look at what these fans look they, how they'll support you if you do them right and you stick by them like Lindy did for four decades. Um, so I love Lindy. Everyone loves Lindy. And what's really cool about him signing an extension there for me is his continual climb of the all time wins list in the NHL. It's super cool to me that he is as high as he is already. He's the fifth winningest coach in NHL history. All time wins. He's fifth. He has got four guys to pass. He probably passes, I think, three of them. He's not going to get to number one. Number four at all-time wins is Ken Hitchcock. Lindy is 15 wins behind Hitchcock. He'll do that this year. And I think he'll enjoy doing that this year because him and Hitchcock have had some run-ins in the past. Number three all-time wins is Barry Trotz. He is done coaching. He is 80 wins above Lindy. And to me, that's two seasons. He should get there easily in two seasons. He had 52 wins last year. He's got to average 40 for the next two years. I think he'll do that. Number two all-time is Joel Quenville. And I don't know if Joel Quenville is going to coach again. He shouldn't. He's a part of that Blackhawks scandal. If you touch if you touch that scandal, you should not coach again because he was a part of that. So I think he's done. Yeah, I don't know if I trust the NHL, though. Either way, 135 wins for Joel Quenville ahead of Lindy Ruff. He's 135 ahead of Lindy. Lindy won 52 games last year. That's an average of about 45 wins a season, roughly. He could do that. I think he will do that. I think Lindy Ruff, I really believe this, and I think it's crazy. Um, And that's if it's only three years. It could be four. It could be five. He's 63. Hockey coaches can go to 70. He might have six, seven years left. That team is young, by the way. They're the fifth youngest team in hockey. Um, and They're great already. I think he's going to be the second winningest coach of all time. He's not going to get to number one. He's 410 wins back of Scotty Bowman. If he averaged 40 wins a year for 10 years, he might get there. But he'd have to coach into his mid-70s if he's want a shot at number one. But you know what? If I were Lindy, and I truly love what I'm doing, and I'm, he looks he looks, looks good, right, physically. Um, if I'm Lindy Ruff, you know, I got two motivations left in, in life as a coach. 
if I'm Lindy. I got to get the cup, right? I got to get the cup. But two, if I've if I've been good in New Jersey and I could just keep going here, I can even get another job after because it went so well with the Devils. Let, I'll hang around for that record. Let me see if I can get enough jobs to get the record. If I were Lindy, I might say, yeah, I'll coach till 75 and become the winningest coach in NHL history. You never know. That's way down the road, though. The other bit of news I want to get to before we take up too much time, just the news and notes here, is another report tying Patrick Kane to the Buffalo Sabres. This time, though, it is not from Darren Dreger. Darren Dreger is who we had been hearing this from um, multiple times. In fact, I think it was three times that we had heard. Um, I think it was three times we had heard Darren Dreger talk about it. This time, it's from Elliot Friedman. The big guns, right? Like the, the Rappaport, the Woj of the NHL. Friedman writes in 32 thoughts that... Th- on Patrick Kane, Florida was very aggressive during the summer, but Buffalo will be the team to watch. Not a team to watch, the team to watch. I'm taking seriously the idea that they're thinking about it. I still don't want to believe that they're going to do it. Um, player evaluation, I think, will arrive at. This player is not going to help us. I did put a poll up because, to me, the only way you can even get me near liking this idea, and I still don't even like it with this, I just don't think Kane's good anymore, really, at the end of the day. But okay, if you're so committed to signing Patrick Kane, you can't have Victor Olsen on the team. You can't. You can't have two one-dimensional offensive players and most of their production now at this point comes on the power play. And I put a poll up. If you can only have one in the lineup, who are you picking? Patrick Kane or Victor Olsen? 73% are saying Patrick Kane. As I probably would have expected, but just not just... Giving you a heads up, there is another report, and this time a different reporter, and as big as it gets when it comes to the reporting game in hockey, that is tying the Buffalo Sabres to Patrick Kane. So we have to we have to continue to monitor that um, because there is a real chance, I think, that it happens. Even though I don't like the idea and I still would bet heavily against it, there is at least a chance. Not It's not the chance. That doesn't work anyway. Time out here when we come back. The lineups for Sabres and Rangers. Talk about the matchup. Coming up on Locked on Sabres, we are presented by FanDuel Sportsbook. We'll uh, we'll go through some of the betting odds for this game a little bit later as well. Stay tuned for that. When we do that, props as well, um, we'll do that with the odds from FanDuel. FanDuel is not just hockey, though, even though the NHL season has begun. Of course, football. Snap into the NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. Football, basketball, hockey, baseball, everything's happening right now. The app is super easy to use. Wide range of betting options, spreads, player props, over-unders, plenty more. Futures, of course, is my favorite. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Back here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen every day or your first watch every day. Because, again, you can check us out on YouTube. All right, let's go through the matchup. Sabres and Rangers. We got a 7 o'clock puck drop at KeyBank Center. Player introductions might push that back a little bit, um, but just after 7 o'clock, I'll be in the arena. Uh, can't wait. If you are uh, if you want to say hi, I'll be the guy wearing the uh, – I. this is, again, this is why I like having a jersey and getting a jersey that I don't think anybody else has. If you see someone in a Jim Lorenz number 8 jersey tonight, it's probably me. But if you took my idea and got one for yourself, I respect that too. Uh, the Sabres lineup for this game tonight. As we look at it, what we're looking at is a lineup that is a little bit different than what we saw through a lot of training camp. So let's fire it up and go through our matchup between the Sabres and the Rangers. Starting with the Sabres lineup, line one. And this is your projected lineups um, going into uh, Thursday morning. Could change as the day goes on. We'll see. Line one, no surprise. Maybe a little bit of a surprise, actually. Thompson, talking Skinner, back together. I did think there was some chance that Benson would stay there. He had practiced with Thompson and Skinner all throughout training camp, and maybe he will get a crack on that line at some point during the game or some point a little bit uh, in a different game. Um, But Tuck Tuck is back on that line to begin the season. No surprise there. Dylan Cousins is centering J.J. Paterka and Victor Olsson. We made it to opening night, and Olsson indeed was just the guy that went in for Jack Quinn. 
that just a simple, you know, I think Olsen wouldn't be on this team if Jack Quinn hadn't gotten injured. So it kind of makes sense that Quinn, who is a shooter too, but a more complete hockey player, I will say, um, that Olsen would be the guy, the man that steps in um, for uh, Jack Quinn. Line three, and this is about how I think it will go in terms of ice time. Line three, Casey Middlestat at center, which he did not do a lot when he was on the third line last year. There were a lot of moments where he would take the face off and then he would play the wing while once the play began. Middlestat centering Zach Benson and Jordan Greenway. Benson makes it into the top nine. We'll play a little bit less, I'm sure, in terms of ice time playing on this line. I'm fine with it. I think Don Granado made some sense when talking about Greenway, you know, almost like an offensive lineman pulling in front of a running back, um, creating lanes for Benson um, with his size and his speed straight ahead. And Middlestat, I think, is a is a good enough offensive player to get the most out of Benson. You know, Benson is more of a playmaker as well. Benson can do everything, though. He could shoot. He scored four goals in the preseason. So maybe because Middlestad is more of a playmaker, we see Benson kind of be the finisher of that line at the beginning of his career. But I'm super excited to see Benson get to work um, with two good players. Middlestad more so than Greenway. I'm not the biggest Greenway guy, but again, as I said the other day, um, I'm going to await judgment on him until I get to see Granado work with him more. more. Line four. There's one thing I don't like about line four. Peyton Krebs, Zemgus Gergensen, and Kyle Poso. That line played together a lot last year. The thing I don't like about it, and I don't even know what I would do different, but I've just it kind of depresses me almost that here we are, the season's beginning again, and Peyton Krebs on the fourth line. I mean, may, am I overvaluing him? Like, I really think there's more there offensively. I guess they just don't need it though, right? Like, I, I get it. They don't need it, but it's frustrating. For me, because I think there's a 50-plus point player in there, at least for Peyton Krebs. I mean, he was a good prospect. Um, and it feels like, you know, the Sabres are just so deep, they don't really need what he was drafted for. Um, but I will give him credit, as I have, that he's done a great job at morphing his game to what the Sabres need. And maybe he'll have to morph again. Maybe if injuries continue, he'll get that opportunity higher in the lineup. And then, all right, Krebs, it's go time. Show us what you got uh, offensively. But for now, line four, checking the role, uh, defensive role with Kyle Poso and Zemgus Gergensens. Blue line for the Sabres. Dalene and Samuelson. They're back together after some experimentation with Connor Clifton up with Rasmus Dalene. Owen Power with Henry Yoki Haru. Another year with Yoki Haru in there. All right, let's see if you've progressed at all. But I'll say this the rope for me is very short for Yoki Haru. If he has a couple of bad games at the beginning, then I'm going to want to see someone else on that line with Owen Power very quickly, especially now that the Sabres have options. Pairing three, Connor Clifton with Eric Johnson. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? That the two free agent additions end up together. Um, but that makes their third pair a lot better than it was last year. Goalies, Devin Levi, of course, is the starter. And we don't know who the backup is, I don't believe, yet. Uh, but I think it's going to be Eric Comrie, would just be my guess, because he outplayed Lukanen throughout the preseason. So that's what you're looking at for the Buffalo Sabres lineup for this game. Um, very quickly, let's give you the Rangers lineup for this game. Um, and then I want to get to some other things, the betting odds and also what to expect in the arena. But a quick word on the Rangers. I don't think... Oh, by the way, I have keys to the game coming up next. That'll be something we do more often this year. Uh, maybe every game, actually. Um, Rangers are good. I just don't think they're a great team. I think they're in that in-between. Um, I think, actually, what helps them is they're in an easier division. I think if they were in the Atlantic division, I could very well see them missing the playoffs. I don't think they missed the playoffs, though, because I don't think the Metro is as strong as the Atlantic is. So what you're looking at with the Rangers, Mika Zibanejad, center Chris Kreider, and Capo Kako, they're really trying to get the most out of their first and second overall picks. Kako has not done anything yet. They're putting him on the top line to see if they can get something going. Same goes for Alexis Lafreniere. He has not gotten going at all, and they're trying to get him going by playing him with Artemi Panarin and Philip Cheadle. That's their line two. Line three, Vincent Trotrek. Blake Wheeler is now a Ranger. Guy you didn't know was on the Rangers, Blake Wheeler. Uh, he's with uh, Will Coyle, a, a young player that's on the third line. And then line four, Nick Bonino. Maybe didn't know he was on the fourth line. Barclay Goodrow, Tyler Pitlick are the others. Blue line, Adam Fox, Ryan Lindgren, 
Keandre Miller, Jacob Truba, really solid top four. That's the best part of the Rangers, I believe, is one, their goaltender in their top four. Third pair, Eric Gustafson and Braden Schneider. And then in net, you will see Igor Shesterkin. Another man maybe you didn't know signed with the Rangers in the offseason, Jonathan Quick is the backup. So if you're look, trying to figure out who the, who looks familiar, who's that backup for the Rangers? It's Jonathan Quick. Very happy he's not a saver, by the way. Terrible. All right. When we come back, my keys to the game, betting odds, and what to expect in the arena tonight. There are some cool things outside and inside that I just want to mention before we run out of time. That's coming up here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. Uh, we are presented by Sleeper. Sleeper is the easiest sponsor for me to ever talk about because, again, I told you last episode, it's the number one app on my phone because I'm fantasy football obsessive, but I'm hockey be- obsessive as well. And you get all your daily fantasy hockey fix on the Sleeper app. It is the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On Podcast Network and the Locked On NHL Podcast Network. With Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash on daily fantasy. You can go right now. You can check out players, uh, whether you want McDavid on your team or McKinnon, or you want to go a little bit more under the radar. Hey, maybe you want Zach Benson on your team for a cheaper price. 100 time payouts on Sleeper. So start paying attention and get your picks right. And you could win big. Use the promo code locked on NHL. You'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's locked on NHL. See sleeper terms of use for details. Final segment here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Um, a couple of things that I want to get to on this matchup Sabres and Rangers tonight before we run out of time. Um, the betting odds for this game. I don't see any player props up yet. So at Locked on Sabres, if you want uh, some more on that uh, a little bit later on. But for the odds for the game, the Sabres are plus 104 on the money line as slight an underdog as it gets. And if you're not familiar with betting terms, plus 104 means if you were to bet, it's everything's within context of a $100 bet. All these odds are in the context of a $100 bet. Plus 104 means if you bet 100 you would get your 100 back, and then you would win 104 on top of it. Rangers minus 125 on the money line. They are the favorite. So, again, what that means, if you were to bet 125, you would win 100. And the over-under for this game is 6.5. Now, a bunch of these Sabre games, including last year at Madison Square Garden, Sabres and Rangers finished hitting the under. Um, Devin Levi, most notably. You had a 3-2 game in Madison Square Garden. You had a 3-2 game at um, in at Key Bank Center as well. In fact, let me look at the earlier games. Yeah, three goals in March uh, against the Rangers, and that's it. So all three games last year against the Rangers hit the under. Why? Well, part of the reason is Igor Shesterkin is one of the best goaltenders in the world. The Sabres now have a goalie that's really good as well. Um I don't, I don't love either side, though, yet. I don't know what's going to happen here. Are the Sabres going to regress offensively? Are they going to get a lot better defensively? How good is Levi going to be? There is so much unknown with the Sabres and goal production um, overall, every all sorts of production. So I'm staying away from the over, the over-under. I do like the Sabres on the money line tonight, but I'm biased, so keep that in mind. All right. Keys to the game. This will be exciting. Keys to the game uh, to get to. As we um, as we progress here on the show, starting with number one. By the way, at uh, on our YouTube channel, you can see these as well. Number one, don't change who you are. I just kind of talked about it. Score, 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 baby. Offense up and down the ice. Young youth, speed, y- y- taking chances. This is the bread and butter of the Buffalo Sabers. This is the bread and butter of. Don Granado's system. Number one is don't change who you are. They should remain the way they have been. Be top five in the league in goals again. Be willing to play 6-4 hockey. Um, I want to see them go up and down the ice. I want to see them try to pot goals. And I expect that they will. Key number two, dominate possession. The Rangers were not a good possession team last year. In fact, the Sabres were a better possession team than the Rangers were. I got the Rangers at 22nd. Um, So they're a team that's built through counterattack 
and their goaltender. Their goaltender is a huge reason why they win games. I think to dominate possession is to control the game, and that's the best way to beat Igor Shesterkin. I think the Sabres need to dominate the puck in this game. And key number three is Tage. That's it. Tage. He's, he's a key. He's a key to the game. He's awesome. Can't wait to get those highlight reel goals back. Sports Center goals. All right. Uh, before we end the show for today and for the offseason, by the way, thanks for everybody for tuning in all offseason long. Um, you know, hockey is a sport where the, the dog days of August and in the late into late July, you know, content can be tough to come by. Um, and Sabre fans are the best. I mean, they're they're listening all year long. Make it easy for me. Um, so appreciate everybody tuning in as the offseason went on. Can't wait for the season. Two things to look forward to in the arena and outside the arena an opening night. One, party in the plaza. I believe doors open at 4.30. Not doors open. Party begins at 4.30. Um, and you'll have players there, red carpet, signing autographs, music, um, everybody hanging out. Like, that'll be cool. And I don't know what the weather is really supposed to be. It might be a little chilly, um, but you're getting that fall weather, so it should be okay. And then, um, in fact, tomorrow, there's no rain in the forecast. You should be fine. Or today, I should say, there's nothing in the forecast. And then, two, try the food. I have hated the arena food my entire life. I've railed against it my entire life. It's my biggest pet peeve about this organization in this arena has been, I, I don't eat there ever because it's a disaster. This year, it sounds like they really made an investment. I don't know how good it's going to be. I'm, I'm excited to try it because there's at least hope. But I heard the Delaware North guys go on with Chopin the Bulldog. They brought food in. Um, I wasn't there in the afternoon. Of course, they did the morning show. Um, and all signs seem to point to it went well and it's exciting. They're doing a themed hot dog each home game based on the theme of the hot dog is based on the opponent. So what does that mean for New York? What's in New York? Like that's uh, like sauerkraut and mustard and onions. Maybe um, I'm not sure, but a New York themed hot dog. And, but then when they play Boston, it'll be a Boston themed hot dog. Maybe they'll put lobster tail on it or something. I don't know, but I think that's really cool that they're getting creative. I guess there's this really good cheeseburger that they're going to have um, everywhere. You can get a burger like that's upgraded. Um, everything seems to be better. Seems to be, I'm excited to try it. I'm going to give it a shot. My first game. I'll report back. How about that? I'll report back. But if you're going to the game and you're someone like me that always eats before because I just never want to eat in that arena, it's overpriced and it's not good. Well, maybe this is maybe for night one, take a shot at it. See what, say what they got. Give them, give them a chance. Um, and if it's not good, then I just won't go back. All right. I won't go back for the food. I'll, they'll come back to the arena, of course. That's it for us. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Enjoy the game, Sabres and Rangers, and hopefully we'll talk about a, a 1 0 Buffalo Sabres after the game is over. The season is here. Thanks for making us your first listen every day here on Lockdown Sabres, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.